Uh, my name's Keith White, this is, uh, this is Cheltenham uh, Science Festival. Um, question about dark matter and, and uh, how we know it exists. Um, they show you a, a map of the universe, the line through the middle showing the, the Milky Way, our galaxy. And then they say, aha, dark matter. And I must admit, I don't follow the, the logic. So, how do we know there's dark matter? Hi, Keith. Uh, how do we know that dark matter exists? Well, astronomers uh, have many ways of um, detecting and deducing the existence of dark matter. The original one, uh, Dudu Tsvicky, uh, a long time ago, was that the motion of galaxies in clusters of ga galaxies that are held together gravitationally um, seemed to move with velocities which were greater than those that you could explain just assuming that these clusters were made out of just the visible galaxies and nothing else and being attracted by gravity. Uh, he suspected that there was some missing form of matter that one couldn't see that was holding these galaxies uh, in place. Uh, later, an uh, astronomer called Vera Rubin did uh, measurements of stars and galaxies rotating around the center of the galaxy and noticed that their velocities uh, were much higher than those that would have been predicted by Newton's laws if the only mass in the galaxy were made up of the visible stars. So that led people to conclude that there must be some form of matter that we can't see, that does not radiate light, that exists in the middle of galaxies and in the middle of these clusters of galaxies, holding them in place and making them move fast. Uh, but there's been other forms of evidence which are perhaps more convincing in the recent years, one being a wonderful picture of two clusters of galaxies colliding. And after the collision, uh, it seems that the ordinary matter and the dark matter that forms a halo normally around the stars, around the whole galaxy, uh, have separated a bit. And their individual components can be measured you can see the ordinary matter directly because it radiates light and we see it in our telescopes. The dark matter can be seen as well, not directly, it's dark, but indirectly because any form of matter, as Einstein showed, uh, will serve as a gravitational lens. Light coming from behind that dark matter will be deflected and bent by the dark matter and by this lensing effect, one can determine the distribution of the matter that makes up the lens. So, in this event, the two forms of matter that make up the galaxy have separated a bit. The ordinary matter, which interacts quite strongly, more strongly with itself, undergoes some kind of friction and lags behind, and the dark matter has separated and is seen in a slightly different place. It's a very dramatic picture. And finally, the uh, cosmological observation, many cosmological observations have led to a, a rather good model of the history of the universe from the Big Bang until today, and in particular the distribution of cosmic microwave background depends critically on uh, the evolution of the universe from the Big Bang, 400,000 years uh, to when the cosmic microwave background uh, radiation was liberated and which we measure today. The agreement of those measurements with the cosmological model determines the matter energy content of the universe to a large degree and the precise agreement that has been achieved with the predictions of these, those models requires that most of the matter in the universe, 90% uh, of the matter content of the universe, is in this form of dark matter. That's about just about the same number that you get from these other observations, the motions of stars and galaxy, the motion of galaxy and clusters, and from events such as
the uh, collision of clusters of galaxies. So uh, I think it's, there's quite conclusive evidence by these indirect and via gravitational lensing direct observation of dark matter that it exists and pervades the universe.